Hello and welcome to the Big Five Virtual Voice Summit. We're going to speak, be speaking with Kaya Herstad Carney. This is our kickoff event to our summer intensive training event. The Big Five Coordinations of Singing will be focusing on airflow and air pressure balancing and vocal fold coordination. We'll be talking and working with all of these important elements of the Big Five Coordinations of Singing. But let's jump on and welcome Kaya to the Virtual Summit. Hello, Kaya. How are you today? Hello. I'm great. How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> Looks like it's uh, you still have some daylight where you're at. You're on the other side of the world. I am in Liverpool, England. And yeah, we've had a, a pretty decent day. A uh, little, little cloudy, but yeah, not bad for a May day in Liverpool. Often rainy. <laughs> Yeah, Liverpool. I haven't been, so um, if you're still living there, when I get to come, it's someplace I definitely want to visit. You've been there for a while now, haven't you? Yeah, I lived there since 99 and came over to study and fell in love with the city and the music scene. I uh, spent five years down in London, but wanted to come back here. And the music scene and creative scene is fantastic. And yeah, enjoy it. Wonderful. And you've been you've been helping. I mean, you've been a singer, songwriter, artist, done a lot of recording, sung with bands, your own different bands. And and you're doing a lot of work helping other singers and artists at the moment, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. I, I love doing artist development side of singing, teaching and helping people, both metaphorically and physically finding their voice. Um, so I'm uh, yeah, I'm it's my favorite part of the vocal the training of being able to kind of help people unlock those things that they can hear and maybe not have access to yet. And uh, so, yeah, I do that mainly in the higher education sector. I run a couple of degree programs in creative music production and songwriting and music performance and a new MA in songwriting. Get to kind of help people on that part of their voice as well uh, as the physical um I have a college in practice, uh, a voice geek, a self-confessed harmony fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you are definitely multi-talented. We've known each other for a few years, and um, I just think I'm a big fan. I I know you're a very hardworking individual, and it's and I feel like I'm a pretty hardworking guy as well. But I'm so impressed by everything you're doing, uh, creating curriculums and education you know, for different organizations and schools and universities and, and still coaching singers and singing. And you just, it's something that's very special. And I talked with Laura about this a little bit early. You just seem to have found your passion and it just keeps fueling your fire. Yeah, that's it. Well, likewise, yourself as well, you, you know, doing, even putting this together and thank you for having me. And it's just great to see inspiring people around the world who really want to help singers. And it's coming from a place of, you know, wanting to share and wanting to learn more so we can help other people. And, you know, what a, what a privilege to do as a job to be able to work in music and, and you know, help people find their own path and and be a, a small part of uh, artist journeys right across the world, uh, you know, and singing teachers, I teach a, a fair few singing teachers as well, who like earlier on in their career to kind of help them expand their toolkit. And yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a passion. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It does change lives. That's why, I mean, I, I know I say it, but my, my mission with Singing Revealed is to improve the world one voice at a time, because I've seen that just helping an individual improve their singing changes their whole self-confidence their energy their they their sucral friends sometimes can change their income mentoring teachers can give them help them keep spreading the joy there is a universal joy in singing that's why we do it that's why everybody that's here likes to sing and wants to know how to do it better but there is a lot of frustration involved as well that we kind of we need to learn to overcome and we're not going to delve into the mindset of that but um just a quick note as kind of a lead into what what i asked and and talked to you about speaking about but a client yesterday was it yesterday time moves so fast <laughs> two days ago and um very talented singer just natural she's 
really, really good. And we were just talking about how important it is to embrace your personal sound, that your vocal tract has the specific, specific frequencies. You have your specific voice print, like your fingerprint, and that's what makes you unique. So when you spend most of your time covering other artists, you're trying to sound like the other artists because you love their voice. They inspired you. And sometimes we take it a little bit too far and manipulate our voice out of where it really lives. And that makes singing often more difficult. So she really clicked a couple of days ago, just going, having this, aha. So my voice is good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Your voice is good enough. The only reason you love different singers and because of the uniqueness of their voices, because they embraced their sound. Mm. Once you embrace your sound, you can still stylize, but part of getting to your natural resonance in this freedom and, and freeing up your voice is working on improving your skill level at the big five coordinations of singing. So we, I asked you to talk about, we're going to be teaching this summer about vocal fold coordination, skill level, agility, and articulation, and how to isolate that more. But I said, can you please talk to us about compression, adduction, thickness, thinness? It even came up in, in this today in the virtual summit a couple times. I just feel like singers, I've had singers come to me where they had a coach that was telling them more compression, more compression, more compression. They could not sing anymore. They lost all their high notes. I have other singers coming to me that it's like they, they're not getting the compression that they need to get their high notes. So there's both ends of the spectrum. Can you, can you share your feelings on how the compression, vocal full compression fits into the big five coordinations of singing and help singers and singing teachers understand a little bit more clearly, how do we, how do we clear up this confusion that can mm -hmm. be out there. Yes, absolutely. And and we, we've talked about this uh, several times in the past. We are kind of entering the vocabulary jungle, right? Where, where there's so many names for different things. And we cannot be 100% sure unless we have, you know, MRI camera, we got electrodes on the muscles, we have our spectrogram in a neutral room and camera up the nose. You know, we, we can only make educated guesses but what we can we can use our ears and um, we can look and we can see um, to find out whether we have a freedom of the sound and a balanced compression will have um, almost all the volume control you know so mm. if I'm going to talk a little bit about compression I'll say like from my um my definition comes more from the kind of vocal habilitation side of of things so you will talk from a weak uh, medial vocal fold compression, medial meaning in between the vocal folds rather than, so you can have a weak and then into medium. So if, I, if I'm on a weak medial vocal fold compression, it, it'll sound very airy and it's, it's not very balanced. It's really hard to actually get volume like that. And if I'm medium, I, I kind of call that my, my yoga voice maybe. <laughs> you know, it's a very, very balanced kind of coming into a stronger medium, into a, into a strong uh, medial vocal fold compression, into, into excessive, where you get a lot of uh, compression, mm. a lot of, um, and you know, you're coming from effort into tension. And both uh, um, specters of the weak and the excessive is really not where we should live for the majority of time. Um, you know, screaming or whispering isn't going to kill you if you do it now and then. But if that's where you're living, you're probably going to get some vocal, get into some vocal trouble at some point. So like being aware of uh, how you can use this. And another thing I'm super passionate about is that vocal technique, you could either use creatively or correctively, just like with music production, where you have like, you can add reverb correctively to make it sound like you're in the same room, or you can add it creatively because you want to create the kind of mythical sound or something like that. Um, and I think with vocal fold compression, that's also really something that you can use really creatively. For instance, um, I was uh, listening to Aretha Franklin, uh, the uh, Chain of Fools. Um, and every chain has got a weak link. Well, I may be weak, yeah. And obviously, she can go weak, yeah, but she's using that vocal fold compression, weak, yeah, and you get that really cool 
um, kind of interpretation. Yeah. Yeah, you were mentioning Adele earlier. She definitely uses that a lot. You know, you're hitting the same note either in a, you know, what you might breathy, airy, falsetto, whatever you mm. want to defined it as and then you have the more beltier sound i also like to refer to my muscle belt and my acoustic belt mm -hmm. uh, one of them being kind of pulling the chest voice coordination up uh staying in our kind of first mode um with the more squared off full mass of the vocal fold vibrating or the one where you allow those vocal fold to stretch out go into a thinner fold um, and then using the vocal tract to create a chesty sound so i speak a lot in analogies which i think is my uh, the songwriter in me where you have um you know all apples are fruits but not all fruits are apples mm. and falsetto or like a classical head voice is, is one head voice but you might be in those muscle coordination but if you manage to maintain that vocal fold compression then you can sound like you're in chest even if you're up in what would be head voice territory and that's a much more sustainable place to live, uh, especially if you're doing 25 shows a month or, you know, if you're on, on tour or if you're on uh, in the West End or Broadway, you, you can't pull that chest voice up for many days or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So I, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, of course, I'm just having fun, you know, to, to hearing what, what you're saying and light things are lining up in my brain. But I... I also wanted to just communicate this is these are exactly the how to do this is is what we're going to be focusing on during the intensive training right because it does take wait, singers out there teachers out there going oh well how, okay that sounds great oh yeah that makes sense but how do how do I do that <laughs> like yeah. how how do I how do I maintain menial compression in my head voice and and that right there, some people just thought, what is he talking about, <laughs> right? But, but some people do know, hi Kai from Ian. And um, yeah, this is what we're gonna be training in the intensive program, because obviously we can't pack uh, 35 hours into 45 minutes. But if, is there something that helped you when you start out singing to, that helped you click. Maybe that can help some other people. Maybe I know you have a you have a great big bag. You're like Santa Claus with your tools. It's like, oh, I got a present for you. Here, have another one. Right? But what's something that you uh, like to use for yourself or singers find that what you're describing as not all the vocal folds, not the top, but just getting that that quality of compression that keeps the clarity in your sound. Totally. So I think um, there was a couple of things that was the biggest breakthrough for me because, I, I mean, I've been singing all my life. There's literally tapes of me. I'm, I'm a January 11th is my birthday. And for the Christmas before I turn one, there's a tape of me singing all the Christmas songs. Like I didn't know the words, but I'm still singing. Along. So it is so singing is, you know, it's a combination of nature and nurture with with a lot of things. But I kind of didn't know how to navigate my middle register, even after becoming a professional because I hadn't had a vocal coach who knew how to access that. I went to kind of classical lessons when I was uh, younger and did some musical theater stuff. And then I wanted to sing folk and rock and, and soul. And, and the, my vocal coach didn't know how to navigate that. So it was kind of just going, let's do it one more time and with more emotion, you know, so, which by the way, solved a lot of problems because if you do bring emotive into it, often the body has a tendency to kind of settle itself. But I realized that I, my larynx had a tendency when I was singing in these, the contemporary styles, my larynx had a tendency to, to go up um, every time there was a high note. But there are no high notes or low notes. There's only fast vibrations and slow vibrations. All right, and I'm going to say that again louder for the people at the back. <laughs> so there are no high notes or low notes. We just hear them as high pitches and low pitches. What actually happens is just vibrations of the vocal folds. And when, when you're vibrating at this A440, your vocal folds are vibrating at 440 times per second. It's super fast. Octave below, you got 220, 110. I've got a small keyboard here, so I can't go 55. Every octave is a doubling or a halving of frequencies, not higher or lower. So for me to kind of realize that I wasn't just going 
higher. And then what actually happened is that I'm, 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 I'm making a tighter space and I'm making a smaller, <laughs> you know, a bigger space boost, a different kind of frequencies. And, and then I was like, oh, okay, wow. So if I manage to kind of focus on just moving through this without reaching for them, then I can maintain a lot of that sound. And that was, you know, what you might refer to as a mix. Or, um, and I, I kind of discover that and I managed to lean in more into it through these new exercises and, and like really using vowels that helped because nothing's, it's not linear, right? It's not like mm. you just move your vocal folds and all of a sudden everything's perfect because you have to adjust it also depending on what word you're singing and stuff like that as well. So, yeah, I think that uh, the combination of understanding that there are no high notes and also recognizing when uh, these things move, it's kind of like when you learn dance in the beginning, the isolations are really difficult and you kind of want to move everything. Mm -hmm. If you isolate the length position, you know, the, how you use your pharynx, your tongue, your jaw, your lips, your soft palate, and you can kind of make these tiny little adjustments and you have an instant change, right? Whilst other things is more like, you know, I can teach you how to do a setup, but you won't automatically get a six pack, unfortunately. So <laughs> that is through doing it again and again and again, and eventually those muscles kind of just click in there. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, it does. I mean, we've all been, you know, we all grew up and became singers and professional singers and vocal coaches, uh, at least most of the people that are speaking today, we, we've been through that phase. We can totally relate to what you're going through. Absolutely 100% relate to what you feel now. And that's, that's what's really beneficial. So yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people told me, do these exercises, do this, but I didn't get a lot of why or how, oh. or when you're doing it, watch out for this, because that will lead to this down the road. You know, I was just back in the day, it was just like, you just practice and you'll get better. Well, it did get better, but there was some things that also created obstacles for me to overcome later on. So what you're saying is absolutely correct. Um, it's not going to happen overnight, but there's a lot of value in and getting the same exercise unpacked for you on mm. and personalizing it because this is what you need. This is what you want to achieve. This is how you get there. Now it's going to take some time, but don't, don't go in that pitfall and watch out for the lion around the corner and you know, don't stub your toe on that rock. Just little, little things like there can help you get there a lot faster. You still have to put in the time. Totally. And, and, it's always a journey, and, and and I think the most exciting thing is as as an artist, um, you know, rather than just thinking of a, you know, everybody can be better at singing, just like with dance, yeah, everybody can learn the moves. Some people might look differently, and you, you were mentioning that thing of falling in love with your own voice. Mm. Um, I, see, I, I'm, I'm in analogy world again, but like a violin and a cello can play the same tune, but they won't sound the same, but it can be just as beautiful. It's just different. And if you, you can kind of embrace the differences that you have and, you know, the size and shape of your vocal tract and the way you've been brought up and your accent and everything that affects you is going to influence your sound, as is the music you listen to. And, you mm -hmm. know, there's things you can't hear until it's been pointed out, both in your own voice. Um, and I think that's why it's so useful to work with with a coach that kind of listens to you and works with you in a student-centered way where you kind of can explore safely to create the sound that you want because everybody doesn't like the same thing. Right. Like I've been watching uh, Taylor Swift's coming to Liverpool soon and, and it's really interesting to see the polarized opinions <laughs> about this, you know, yeah. international yeah. Star, and some people are like, "Oh my god, I don't understand what's going on," and you know, and and then other people are like, "Oh, I'm gonna tent outside Anfield," <laughs> you know. It, it's you're never gonna have one voice for everybody that is like that's the perfect voice because it's so much preference and and you know if you don't if if somebody doesn't like your voice, oh well, well if you're on stage and you're liking it, it's nothing to do with you. Yeah. That's they can move on. 
Yeah, well, yeah, it's totally true. You don't need to be mainstream to to um, communicate your message. And I guarantee anybody that is authentic and true to themselves will find their follow followers. You will find your tribe. People will appreciate what you do because at the very least, they will appreciate your authenticity, you, mm -hmm. your courage just to be you. And I'm going to put this out there. I really believe it's true. I like to say I have never heard an ugly human voice. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of beautiful voices struggling to get free. Mm hmm. But when they do get free, there's something innately beautiful uh, to our ears about the human voice. Just beautiful. Uh, a lot of times there's filters in the way from it being free. But that doesn't mean there's... Nece I've never heard, still to this day, get a voice free. I think it's gorgeous. I've never heard an ugly voice. So embrace your resonance. Embrace your true, uh, authentic identity. It's who you are. And when you do, your singing will will um, accelerate. Now we've got off, off topic on that, but <laughs> we got, uh, um, want to jump back to our compression topic here. Did I misunderstand that whispering, singing too low in volume very often is not good for one's voice? So um, I think it's kind of, um, if you've heard of the 80-20 rule of like 80% staying in a healthy zone and then 20%, you can kind of afford a little bit of naughtiness. You know, the more you exercise, the more I think you can have without uh, ending up unhealthy. <laughs> um, it's kind of, your whispering and your shouting will be in the the outer ends, but if you live mainly in in the more balanced place, then it's more the forced whisper that um, mm. can get you trouble and it's not always um you know that kind of if you're trying to whisper through um it, it can it, yeah it's not it's not where you should be living most of the time mm -hmm. and um, one thing actually and there's a really hot topic at the moment because of the i guess it started with lana del rey and the billy eilish and all, all these kind of more airy mm. vocal um if you listen to them live, they generally don't stay in that coordination as they do in the recording because it is tiring. Uh, and they also use a lot of production techniques like oral, oral exciters and, and like essentially uh, frequencies added. So it sounds more whispery than what they're actually producing. Yeah. So, and that's a big one. We get a lot of students, I'm sure you do as well, you know, even professional clients who come in and go, oh, I'm, I want to learn this song and I want to sound like that. And and they haven't actually realized that there are six Kelly Clarkson on Because of You, you know. <laughs> <Not old. laughs> six times. And it's, you know, Kelly Clarkson couldn't even do that song on tour uh, yeah. like it was on the album. And, you know, and, and, and vocals are athletes in that way. And um, I think that's why having a good routine and having a, a, a kind of good whether you want to I, I don't call it I call it more like balancing the voice rather than warm up as such it's mm. it's more like kind of finding that balance between the vocal fold compression and the airflow that you were talking about earlier you know so you've got the activator the vibrator in a good balance and that balance then you can increase and decrease airflow but we're still in balance yes I'm totally with you I just want to point out this this is the whole point this is the whole point of of the the big five intensive training event it's because it's really easy to say this it's not that easy to do it and no. you can't do it if you don't develop the specific coordinations like where's that compression and where is it in the adduction what you need to train it you need to train it you need to develop that coordination and when you do and you balance that with I've got control of flow and pressure balance. Now you can execute it and you can execute it in a healthy way in a sustainable way. But until mm -hmm. you attain that skill level, you're going to be struggling. You'll have things connected like, uh, like, like I said, fingers on a hand, you know, it's like mm -hmm. you can say live long and pressure prosper. Can you say peace rock on and live long and pressure prosper back to back? <laughs> ah, it's so hard you know how fast can you do that that's the same thing going on in here even smaller parts that we can't even see so it takes some development and that's why 
we um, last summer we did a great intensive on belt and mix and it was very popular but I observed as a teacher uh, people understanding but not being able to execute so mm -hmm. that's why I want to have a focus this year on giving you the tools for these individual coordinations so you can execute so if I want to get a Billy either sound and I'm gonna say and I'm singing like and I'm singing um, fly me to the moon how would I go from there to get a Billie Eilish sound? <laughs> so um, sometimes I will use, um, you know, natural, instinctive things like, oh, let's do a little sigh. Ah, fly. Ah. You know, that might pick you, pick you into the, that kind of category. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I'll go that kind of toolkit and, you know, it might be, a, it might be a, like at the end of a cry and you might have a yeah. little bit of that kind of thing. Um, but sometimes I will use the combination of vowels and consonants that helps put us in mm -hmm. that category. But if somebody is that com kind of a full compression and haven't explored the, the breathier sounds, I probably would do some SOVTs first, so your semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, where it's a resistance exercise, essentially, and, and most of you would have done some, even if you haven't heard the, the term, things like and or even or humming, um, the straw, you know, I, I love a straw, but the, the thick one in water and things like that, and just yes. like practice a little bit of maybe even like the mess of the watch you're going from quietest to the loudest to the quietest again and um, play around with dynamics in that way so um but i told you i told you kaya has it's like santa claus here she comes <laughs> <laughs> yeah but let, let's go back because they're all they're all great but and you're basically in, in essence saying well i've got to try different things out with the individual singer to see what helps that person get there because not every tool is going to work the same for everybody, and which which is true. But let's let's say, big five coordinations of singing. I sing, fly me to the moon, and I come to you and I say, I want to sing Billie Eilish. What what are we doing here with the big five? Airflow, mm -hmm. air pressure, vocal folds, pharynx, tongue. There's a specific design that makes that fly me to the moon. I know it because I can do it, right? So mm -hmm. what, what's what's going on there? As far as air pressure and air flow rate, is is there a difference between that song and the Billie Eilish? For sure, there's more compression. There's more vocal full mass um, vibrating. Okay. Um, and, um, I mean, sometimes you might actually create that kind of Billie Eilish sound with more airflow than what you'll have with you were talking about this earlier where the subglottal pressure if your vocal folds are compressed they need less air to vibrate than if 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 they're apart which is sometimes like a yeah exactly the singers always <laughs> freak out when i say that what do you mean what do you mean less air but it's more pressure talk about yeah. it tell explain <laughs> yeah. why i'm sure there's a million people out there wondering how that works well, one of the, like, if, if you imagine, so you see somebody running into the street and you're going to stop, uh, you're going to yell at them because a, a truck is coming. You go, hey, I didn't have to go, you know, and take a big, massive breath in. It was a short and shallow because, <laughs> and it's still loud. And, and people, that, that that is one of the exercises I use if I'm, I'm in a group kind of situation where, you know, that is an instinctive way of creating. Volume is a product. It's not... A process right it, you don't have to if you're going to mm. i'm angry i'm going to come over and be really loud at you it's not how things work you know you, can i jump on that because i talked about earlier that you need to relax to inhale and mm. so in that sort of a situation people might be thinking they're not relaxing to inhale if, if something is coming they go hey i want to i want to point out it's just fast you mm. still, your abdominal wall is going to relax for a split second. That air is going to come in and bam, there's the sound. So it's going to hold true for every time you breathe to get into efficient breathing. You have to relax to for the diaphragm to be able to go through its full range of motion. All right. There are always little exceptions. Maybe I only need, like you said, a, a, a tablespoon of air. You mm. know, then I'm not going to need that full diaphragmatic uh, process. It could just be, hey. Hey! <laughs> right? A little teaspoon of air. In that way as well. You know, we have 
so many different ways of breathing because breathing literally keeps us alive. So the mm. body will, adjust. you know, when you have somebody who's broken their ribs and they, they can't yeah. do the full expanse and the body, it works out the way. But it's so funny when students come in and, and they go like, oh, I have a problem with my breathing. It's hardly ever their breathing. It's their breath management, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and sometimes by just doing the getting them to breathe fully out and getting that recoil breath and, and understanding that the most important thing isn't filling up on air. It's we need a refill. We're not a petrol tank. Yeah. Uh, we need a refill, not to <laughs> fill up. <laughs> well, and also you can't, I mean, what good is it going to do to keep filling it up if it's already full? It's not going to do any good at all. Right. Exactly. And we're not getting rid of the carbon di dioxide side of things. So, right. you know, our body knows how to do this. Uh, sometimes the kind of breath management problems is really because we have overrid it with habits that we picked up along yeah. the way or stress or all that kind of stuff. So good tip for you singers out there. If, if you're feeling tight um, and you feel like you're running out of air, it, it's not going to work every time, but it, sometimes you'll be surprised. You feel like you don't have enough air for a note. As soon as you feel that feeling, breathe out. Find out how much comes out. You might be surprised how much toxic gas, not toxic gas, but uh, there, <laughs> there's not enough oxygen in there. You just didn't have that reset and flow. And you picked, yeah. You said something about compensation and workarounds, which I, I, the body is designed to, to absolutely uh, work around anything that gets in its way. So um, I'm squishing us closer together we're, so we can be friends here. Um, <laughs> anyway, so interestingly enough, the big, the, the big five coordinations of singing are going to work the same way. Let's look over at airflow coordination. What if you have, you're using subglottal pressure, but you have no flexible expansion. Now you're going to enter into a zone where something has to compensate because it's out of alignment. What if you going, if you have great pitch accuracy, but you're trans you're really struggling with transitions it's because one of those things is out of alignment you might have great pitch ac accuracy and you have a lot of high pressure but perhaps that transition you don't have you haven't developed the control of letting go of some of the tension letting go slowly of some of the compression to help you change into a different sound so and the body finds a way and when the body's compensating for something that's not out of alignment, it's less efficient. It's not going to work, right? If I, if I walked around like this my whole life, you know, not because I have a deformity, I just got in the habit, um, half mm -hmm. of my body is going to be much stronger than the other. Totally. So, yeah. I had um, a student, um, you know, Stone Cold, the Demi Lovato yes. song, which, I mean, it's a workout. It, it, it is, is one of those risk songs that I call them, you know, when you have to train and, um, but she actually nailed it. Uh, eventually we, we spent kind of five months on it. Um, uh, but, um, when she started it was stone, cold, stone, cold. It's like, would you ever actually say it? Like, like, you know, you can speak for quite a lot of time. And, and, and it was also re reaching down. So it was also stone, where you don't get any resonance because, um, you know, yeah. it is very low for, um, well, she's kind of a mezzo-soprano style voice. It, it yeah. is low. Um, yeah. and, and we were kind of working on the resonance with the, the, getting the vocal folds together using, you know, a combination of them. Like one tool I use for that, if, if so that's the opposite of getting into airy. We're getting a little bit more compression, that getting that mm, mm, or something like that, where you, where you get a little bit more vocal fold mm. mass together. Um, and that really opened up the higher end where, where you have to jump up to octaves uh, because you then have a bit of compression. It's easier to maintain compression than to jump from um, an airier kind of style into full-on belty style. Yeah. 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 It's easier to, to do this than to do this. Yeah, totally. Closer together. <laughs> And another one um, that I actually wanted to mention, I've got my little <laughs> bullet point of one thing uh, that I think is a massive kind of uh, breakthrough is understanding how you can have different onsets or like the attack of the note can right. be either, you know, either you can let the airflow start and then the vocal fold come together. So you almost get like a, uh, you're more likely to get into a more weaker 
vocal fold compression. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with weak here. It's, you know, it'll have that kind of more airier sound, whilst the yes. opposite of when the vocal fold comes together, ah, your glottal onset. And then the middle ground, and again, most of the time, middle ground is the most healthy, balanced. Doesn't mean we can't do the others. It just, uh, it's good to find, you know, in, in, um, in rehabilitation, they work a lot with negative practice as well, where they're like, okay, show me mm -hmm. that you did it right and show me how you did it wrong just yeah. to kind of know the difference. And, I'm, and I, I do use that with onsets, making sure the students understand that, you know, if they do start with a really aspirate onset or the airy onset, then they're more likely to struggle getting those vocal folds together, especially in the middle range. So that is another one of those that, um, yeah, I'd really uh, encourage everybody to practice and we will definitely work on in the summer as well. Yeah, that is a great, great example because those are, those are the things we're covering here in the training. We're covering airflow coordination, vocal flow coordination. So airflow, airflow and air pressure balancing. And those, those, those two things have to come together um, to give you control over your onset. I mean, the onset is just that, focal fold function and air function. We're not even getting into the pharynx or, or the tongue, even though, again, there are five things on one hand. They're not going anywhere. But if we've got a couple of things stuck together, then we have a less efficient hand. So that's exactly what we're going to be working on, developing more isolative control to, ex to improve your skill level and dexterity, if you will, your vocal agility. And flexibility. Um, yeah, tell me, tell me what excites you about this intensive training coming up for for singers in general. Why why should people do this? Why are you recommending to your clients that people do this? Well, I, th I think sometimes having like a bit of a boot camp or a little bit of a well, we call it a challenge. Me sets it, it's kind of like creating smart goals. You, you it's specific. You you can you start there and you end there, and you you go in and you find out a goal, and you know you know that you've improved. Because sometimes when you're training, especially you know, as I said like the majority of, of my students are either um, pros, semi pros, or, or wanting to be pros, and and. Um, you sometimes stagnate a bit in your training. You, you do what you've always done. And and um, just like when you're in the gym, if you just do the same exercises with the same weights for the entire team, you're not going to improve. You're just going to stay the same. So by coming in and, you know, whether it's conferences, whether it's challenges like this and actually getting some new tools in your toolbox, um, hopefully gets you excited and, and, and you know, I, I can... I'm, I'm I'm an eternal student myself, so I, like I, I just love going to these kind of things and and picking up a few ideas and um, and coming back into the studio with with new spark basically and and finding out something about your voice, you know, because it's always something new to learn and and that's exciting. That's exciting for me too, and thanks for sharing that. I'm looking forward to learning from you and learning from all the other teachers. It will be very exciting for me, and I'm so excited to see people's progress so please you guys consider this it's going to be a game changer for you the better you improve and control your coordination of of the big five it's just more easy to combine them to sing anything you want everything is going to get more efficient and it's so nice to have a focus focus time where you're just focusing concentrating on developing a specific skill have a great day. I'm going to take a short break and we'll be back on with Matt Edwards here in a few minutes. Kaya, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for supporting um, this educational event for singers and teachers around the world. Have a lovely day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.